morning, my name is Josh with Cyclone Oz. Happy Sunday to all watching today. We're going to be talking about some heavy rainfall that's on the cards for Tasmania, Victoria and New South Wales. We'll recap on the severe weather over in Western Australia. We'll talk about some rainfall for far north Queensland. And we'll also chat about a developing heat wave over central Australia where temperatures could soar as high as 40 degrees over the coming few days. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please do consider subscribing. Your support is greatly appreciated. So we're going to start things off over with New South Wales, Victoria and Tasmania. There's currently a rain band streaming in there now, and that's bringing showers and the isolated thunderstorm to central parts of New South Wales, and also keeping the temperatures there relatively cool in comparison to locations surrounding it. You can see there is some decent rainfall that's expected to move through parts of New South Wales today. In fact, we've already had accumulations about 15 millimetres around Orange, uh, Forbes, and that sort of area, and some good accumulations are expected to continue over the coming few hours. And you see it here on the rainfall forecast. It is a little bit off, actually. The Eastern River has been pretty inaccurate on this forecast. I find the GFS to be slightly more reliable, so we'll use this model just temporarily, even though it is lower resolution and doesn't crank out the data that we want to make an accurate forecast. However, uh, through Sunday and Monday, we are expecting some showers to continue into the um, eastern and the northeastern half of the state. Uh, for locations between Newcastle, Tari, up towards Coffs Harbour, that sort of area. Um, but again, not much rainfall is expected, only a couple of millimetres through there. Um, and in contrast to that, we're expecting some severe thunderstorms later tonight across parts of Victoria with the approaching cold front that's sweeping through. Now what's going to happen here, and I'll refer back to the satellite imagery here, is these um, this cold front down here is sweeping in a big band of northwesterly winds which are bringing warm, not humid, but semi-humid air into Victoria. And with the combined humid air from this cold front, uh, from this uh, frontal system here that's moving through New South Wales, those two systems will collide sometime early this afternoon, creating a what's expected to be a thunderstorm outbreak across central and eastern Victoria and you can see it here there is the chance of severe thunderstorms at around 6 or 7 p.m. tonight especially for locations between a line of Melbourne out to Bendigo and Bort uh, through to Shepparton and Mansfield and out towards Albury and Wagga Wagga in New South Wales. These thunderstorms here like I said do have the potential to become severe at some point uh, with damaging winds isolated pockets of heavy rainfall and maybe even large hailstones conditions do look primed for severe thunderstorm development this afternoon with a lot of energy in the atmosphere in the form of convective available potential energy there's about 600 joules per kilojoule, uh, kilogram of air, which is a pretty high value to be seeing across Victoria for this time of the year. So it definitely looks like we've got the chance of a bit of a severe thunderstorm outbreak, if you will. And again, nothing too crazy is expected across New South Wales, but some of these storms do have the potential to be semi-severe across Victoria, bringing in those threats that I have just listed. With rainfall accumulations expected to be up above 30 millimetres for a big swathe of central eastern Victoria between sort of Mansfield up towards Albury, Omeo, and some of the more mountainous communities will likely miss out on the big rainfall accumulations, but it still looks like a pretty good spread of it. Melbourne expecting up to 10 millimetres today. I reckon the rainfall there will be very hit and miss, and when it does hit, it will be more so the northern and the eastern suburbs, but couldn't write off a good thunder cell moving through the centre of the city. Uh, the west coast of Tasmania as well expecting a few good drops of rainfall today, but that is nothing in comparison to what we have to talk about now, and that is heavy rainfall that's expected to pipe up over Tasmania and Victoria from about Wednesday onwards. And this rainfall here, mark my words, it is heavy. You can see accumulations on Wednesday from a cold front that's going to be sweeping through. It does give Victoria a bit of a miss, but we do st still see rainfall and snowfall accumulations above 50 millimetres for parts of Tasmania on Wednesday, just from showers that are going to be streaming ashore. Same deal with Thursday, another cold front and some showers moving through Thursday night. We're expecting rain to continue piling on for Tasmania, and again, with that westerly flow, the west coast getting drenched Friday and Saturday onwards, and even to start off September, another cold front moving through, and more rainfall on the cards. So you can just see it is a steady westerly stream of rainfall and snowfall right through into about Tuesday morning next week in September. Uh, Tuesday the 3rd, we're expecting the rainfall to slowly start to ease off of Tasmania. But again, just playing this through again from the cold front that's going to be coming through late Tuesday night, right through Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. It is just a constant westerly stream of showers that's going to be impacting Tasmania. Uh, and it's going to amount to an awful lot of rainfall. Again, typical weather for this time of the year, but we are talking about a vast quantity of rainfall coming ashore, and especially with rivers flowing at about 80% capacity, this rainfall in Tasmania could result in some flooding. So rainfall accumulations from this weather event, which I'm going to call a week-long rain bomb over parts of Tasmania, they will amount very, very quickly. Averaging about 30 millimetres a day, we're going to quickly see rainfall accumulations soar to 200 millimetres over just this week-long period between Tuesday uh, the 27th of August and Monday the 2nd of September. Good rainfall 
was well expected along the northern coast of Tasmania between 80 and 120 millimetres possible. Around Ben Lomond National Park accumulation slightly higher at about 125 millimetres but it is the west coast right from Mount Syker Island extending up towards Waratah and um, Arthur River. Very heavy rainfall accumulations are possible. Strawn expecting about 180 millimetres. The bulk of that will be coming in from those showers from about Thursday through to about Sunday. Uh, heavy rainfall as well expected around Strathgordon in the mountainous areas of the southwest coast up to 180 millimetres is possible there and then Queenstown, Rosebury, Mount Reed are going to be the wet spots and I do believe Mount Reed in a weather event like this has the potential to pick up four or 500 millimetres from this weather event. Keep in mind the west coast of Tasmania very much overlooked at times from these weather events. Um, the west coast of Tasmania can pick up up to five metres of rainfall in a calendar year so we can't be writing off half a metre of rainfall coming through in just a week. It is a rainforest or classed as a rainforest at least uh, this part of Tasmania. So this sort of rainfall, it is typical, it is expected, but it is still a lot and I believe it can catch people off guard quite quickly. The rainfall accumulations across Victoria have been back down. Still some good falls expected across the Australian Alps in the Victorian Highlands and into the New South Wales Highlands as well and some good falls also expected along the southwestern coast of Victoria but again I don't think it's going to be penetrating too far inland but still the showers will be welcome across Victoria especially later on this uh, week. Um, but it's the snowfall accumulations that's really turned my head again. Again, it looks like the Eastern Wolf has backed down the snowfall accumulations once again. And I said this yesterday, they'll continue to back it down. And I only reckon we'll get about 40 centimetres of accumulating snowfall over the high peaks of Tasmania in this week-long weather event. Good snowfall expected along the west coast as well between 5 and 15 centimetres for locations as far down as about 700 metres so still it looks like it's going to be pretty widespread this snow and then for locations in Victoria snow expected down to about a thousand metres in New South Wales down to about 1200 metres and some accumulations between 2 and 10 centimetres are possible there apart from the high peaks in New South Wales we could be seeing accumulations up to 20 centimetres and snow extending as far north as Mount Katoomba or the Katoomba area and then out towards Orange as well with a few flurries expected out there I believe those those flurries will be coming through Friday and Saturday next week uh, and again nothing too uh, crazy or high in terms of accumulations is expected out there. Uh, this will be, the snow at least is being kept in moderation by temperatures which is what I want to talk about now. We do have a heat wave extending across central eastern Australia and that's going to be starting from today. In fact Udendata yesterday recorded its hottest August day on record breaking the previous record by 3 degrees at 39.4 and also breaking the South Australia's all time winter temperature record bringing it from from 36.5 to 39.4, very close to 40 degrees. It was a very hot day out there, and you can already see on the temperature map, uh, it is just early morning right now, about 10 a.m. out in Central Australia, but Alice Springs already approaching 30 degrees, Birdsville at 27. It is starting to get quite warm, and certainly is going to be a taste of summer over the course of today, with daytime maximum expected to soar up to 38 degrees across Central Australia. Very warm for this time of the year, in fact, up to 14 degrees Celsius above average for some of these places. Very, very toasty indeed. Across parts of southeastern Queensland as well, we won't neglect them. You can see Brisbane going into the low 30s by the looks of things tomorrow, or getting close to the low 30s tomorrow, and also on Tuesday, conditions and temperatures warming up very nicely. And this temporary heat wave does last until about Wednesday. Warm temperatures are still expected right throughout the week, with temperatures between 2 and 10 degrees Celsius above average for large areas of New South Wales and Queensland. But it's central and western Australia that has my attention from about Thursday onwards. You can see temperatures, especially across Western Western Australia expected to soar above 40 degrees Celsius for the first time this uh, northern wet season uh, and temperatures as high as 35 degrees Celsius right down towards Eucla in southeastern Western Australia and through South Australia as well even down towards Sejuna expecting temperatures as high as 30 degrees next Thursday. Friday will be another hot one across central Australia with temperatures as high as 40 or 41 uh, between a line of Alice Springs down towards Birdsville so very very warm indeed to close out August and the hot weather continues through the end of August and into early September as well, especially for Western Australia and the tropical coasts of Queensland, Australia, uh, Northern Territory rather, and into Western Australia. Hot weather looks like it's going to be set in stone from about September onwards, uh, from early September onwards, and this is the short, sharp, quick end to winter that I was talking about and I have been talking about for the last couple of weeks. 
this hot weather very much above average across parts of Australia it's not totally unusual for this time of the year but I would also like to add that this is a very early start to what is going to be the warm weather and temperature anomalies are expected to be significantly above average and let's see if I can find a map of that right now actually yeah, you can see in terms of temperature anomalies you can see temperatures right up towards the 90th or even the 99th percentile across parts of Central Australia right throughout the course of this week those yellow areas indicate above average temperatures and then those pink areas indicate extremely above average temperatures where you're talking sort of highest percentile and a lot of that is extending across especially later this week across Central Australia this early season heat wave certainly looks like it's going to be packing a punch so make sure you are staying hydrated staying cool and probably staying indoors during the peak hour uh, heat hours of the day certainly no vigorous outdoor events are recommended in a weather event like this certainly is going to be quite warm across parts of Central Australia for this time of the year now before we touch on far north Queensland I would just like to give Western Australia a little bit of love they have had some showers over the night as well and we have had accumulations above 50 millimeters from the cold front that did blow through I believe just outside of Collie at Worsley they had 60 millimeters of rainfall from the weather event that blew through over the past 48 hours certainly some decent rainfall accumulations a few showers are still expected to linger throughout the course of today some showers also possible tomorrow evening as a cold front comes up from the south on about Tuesday early morning into early afternoon for the Perth metro area a couple of drops of rainfall expected around Perth on Tuesday before a return to the cool calm dry conditions for Wednesday before another cold front comes up Thursday afternoon I believe and brings some more showers to the southwest and the south as a whole uh, throughout Friday a few showers also expected before a return to the dry conditions on Saturday and Sunday for the weekend it looks like it's going to be a couple of days of dry weather powered by a high pressure system now this does look like it is the winter wrap up uh, at least the cold front starting to become a lot weaker and a lot uh, further between each other and a lot more dry weather is now on the forecast here and you can in fact see it on the rainfall accumulation forecast with rainfall accumulations from today including the two cold fronts that are coming through over the next 10 days not expected to be above 25 or 30 millimeters across a wide swathe of the southwest a few spots in the hills are still expected to pick up at least 50 millimeters over the next 10 days but apart from that the good drops are going to be concentrated to those wet locations Perth itself not expecting too much in the way of rainfall Albany as well missing out on a lot of the rainfall so it looks like winter is really starting to wrap itself up across parts of the southwest which is great to see I bet a lot of people are sick and tired of the winter weather and we've had some very good rainfall this year as well North Cliff just outside of Manjabup and Pemberton has picked up nearly a meter of rainfall this year there's been a lot of personal weather stations including my own that have ticked over a thousand millimeters this year and all of that has been from the winter rainfall we have had a very dry start to the year before a very wet winter so overall it has been a very successful winter in terms of rainfall accumulations and rainfall anomalies and you can see it here with soil moisture values sky high across wide swaths of the southwest and expected to stay that way for some time to come so farmers are very excited for the potentially great or bumper harvest as they call it this winter season fantastic to see into on the topic of rainfall as well let's go and talk about far north queensland real quick they do have some rainfall on the cards but i would just like to talk about how wet the dane tree is in fact i did miss this but yesterday in the 24 hours to 9 a.m beds just outside of mossman picked up 75 millimeters of rainfall and that just goes to show how a couple of showers can quickly turn into a heap of rainfall across parts of far north queensland thankfully there isn't too much coming through throughout the course of today a few showers are possible tomorrow afternoon the showers will continue developing throughout the day some rain is also possible tuesday especially in the morning hours before clearing out tuesday afternoon showers continuing through tuesday evening right through wednesday thursday and into friday as well before a return to a couple of days of dry weather before into the early parts of september some rainfall really does pipe up but you can see it here on the rainfall accumulation map some big accumulations are possible especially across the dane tree you can see peak accumulations above sort of 50 or 60 millimeters there and considering only 10 millimeters was on the forecast for that rain event that dumped 75 millimeters in beds am i for no second saying that 7.5 x the rainfall is expected from this weather event absolutely not however it just goes to show how quickly rainfall forecasts can blow out and become unreliable just because of how fast the rainfall starts to add up across far north Queensland and uh, it is typical for this time of the year where we start to see those showers really do pipe up across parts of far north Queensland but just a heads up when you have 50 millimeters on the forecast it certainly is time to pay attention to the rainfall up there Innisfail expecting some good showers same with the Daintree area Daintree village expecting some good showers throughout the course of next week and like I have been saying every video for the past six months rainfall can very quickly accumulate across far north Queensland nothing to worry about right now but just keep a close eye on the forecast and keep a 
close on the radar and make sure you are always ready to be um, putting in your flood plan um, into complete action because things can get out of hand very quickly across far north Queensland. Start a waffle here. Thank you so much for watching the video to this point. Your support lately has been greatly appreciated. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Your support there is phenomenal and again, greatly appreciated. If you've got any feedback or you want a specific forecast for your location, please let me know in the comment section down below. I'd be happy to get back to you as soon as I can. Um, again, any weather reports for your location, leave them in the comment section. I do love reading them and it, it does help me make these forecast videos as well. A special shout out to the channel sponsors their names are on screen right now and i could not run this show without them so thank you so much for all of them their names are on screen uh, at this time and that is all for me today and i'll catch you all in the next storm goodbye